All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, thank you for CCG's invitation. And uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to talk with a group of uh, excellence experts on Afghanistan. Personally, I don't, um, I'm not an expert on Afghanistan affairs. Um, I just do uh, international relations studies. And uh, actually, uh, Professor Mahoney's points uh, have some overlapping with mine. Uh, it's great to hear from you um, some of the, and actually verify some of uh, my positions. Uh, but after that, I think uh, we need to also, you know, not only uh, address that whether or not China should be a core leader in a multilateral effort to try to uh, help Afghanistan people. But at the same time, I wanted to address the uh, concerns from the Chinese perspective and also the decision process uh, where China wanted to uh, make the decision whether or not or from what um, position to better serve the purpose of uh, trying to resolve the humanitarian crisis, crisis that is currently going on in Afghanistan. First of all, I wanted to say that, you know, the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan is actually serving the grand strategy of the United States, trying to focus on China. Uh, as the professor pointed out, that uh, this withdrawal is a disaster. However, from American perspective, focusing uh, more resources, strategic resources, towards Indo-Pacific and try to pre pressure China from that point uh, will better serve U.S. national strategy rather than continue to put resource into Afghanistan and maintain a failed state. So that's where uh, the U.S. policy is initiated. And the Chinese, of course, opposed this uh, hasty withdrawal and uh, worried about the aftermath of that withdrawal. And currently we're saying the destabilizing factors are rising. And also uh, China is very much concerned that uh, you know, the rising uh, destability in the country would lead to more uh, terrorist group groups working under that environment. And uh, that will destabilizing uh, not only Afghanistan, but has regional implications, including Central Asia uh, and Pakistan, neighboring Pakistan and, and other countries. And those countries are very important for China's BRI because Belt Road is going through those regions and have, we have very important uh, investments in those areas. So we have a vested interest to maintain stability in the region. And secondly, I think uh, right now, China's number one top concern is not exactly uh, uh, terrorist organizations like ETIM in Afghanistan, because we know there's very, uh, only a couple of hundreds remain in that country. However, that issue has been created as a dividing, as a wedge uh, between uh, Muslim countries, particularly Afghanistan and Taliban uh, with China, because recently rumors arising in Afghanistan saying that uh, whatever China is doing in Xinjiang and China's request to clean ETIM from Afghanistan is a way of, it's a sign of repression of Muslim um, and uh, it, uh, sort of rebellion in the region, therefore trying to uh, disseminate this message that uh, China is essentially not a friend to Afghanistan or to other Muslim countries. And that's, uh, that message is uh, uh, sort of spreading also in China, incurring a lot of concerns in China. What, if China continue or increase its activity in Afghanistan, that may lead to potential terrorist uh, activities against China, just like what happened last year, uh, I mean, this year and last year in uh, Pakistan. And number three, uh, I agree with the professor that China's current approach, its policy is determined from the very beginning after the US determination to withdraw, that China should approach Afghanistan through a multilateral platform, but also from a bilateral approach. The multilateral, of course, going through the SDO uh, and other newly created multilateral uh, coordination platforms uh, led by uh, Pakistan, Russia, and also by China. However, we're still trying to uh, figure out which uh, multilateral organization is better positioned to address the issue and to uh, pour more resource to, to help Afghanistan. At the same time, of course, we've witnessed that China is approaching this from bilateral uh, perspective as well. For instance, putting humanitarian aid uh, uh, directly into Afghanistan, for instance, like uh, financing, uh, giving uh, humanitarian aid uh, in terms of vaccines, in terms of food uh, and other humanitarian resources, uh, going through the train, um, uh, freight train and also other means like flight. 
but currently that infrastructure is not working properly. We can only move a uh, very little uh, resource through that infrastructure, and it's not enough to actually solve the uh, ongoing humanitarian crisis. We need more channels going not only from China, but also through Pakistan, through um, uh, through Iran, and also Central Asia countries, multiple ways to uh, move resources into the country so that to help people to go through the winter. Uh, and the next point is that uh, right now, uh, even though that experts uh, wanted to China to play a larger role uh, in terms of helping Afghanistan, however, there's still lack of understanding and support domestically within China. Because as you all know, even though uh, Afghanistan is a neighboring country to China, but the Chinese society in general has very little understanding of Afghanistan's history and uh, what its people is currently undergoing, it's going through. Recently, there's a report just came out uh, two days ago uh, about a group of Chinese um, observers going through uh, provinces in Afghanistan. They traveled 29 days and they wrote, uh, and they were interviewed uh, by Chinese domestic media. And now their interview is online. There are more and more people are reading this and have a better understanding of what exactly is going on uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, because previously, Taliban has a pretty bad name in China and, and Chinese people have uh, fear about their uh, extreme views uh, about uh, Muslim um, belief and also their activities uh, in terms of oppression of women uh, and other activities. So to help Chinese people to better understand exactly what's going on on the ground is a way to uh, have more support domestically for China to provide more aid into uh, Afghanistan. Uh, however, at this point, I think that's still lacking. So in order for the Chinese government to um, act more decisively, it, it is uh, imperative to have more media report uh, inside from inside of Afghanistan and to uh, paint a better picture uh, for understanding of what exactly is going through in that country. And the last one is that um, China has contributed uh, uh, to a certain extent to Afghanistan's rebuilding. And uh, there's already projects within Afghanistan, including BRI projects. There are designs to extend BRI from CPAC into Afghanistan as well. Uh, however, at this point, um, the um, Chinese companies are not willing to put money, resource, human capital into that country because of concern of security, of uh, instability, and of the current government's legitimacy. So in order for um, the economy to go back on track and particularly attract more Chinese capital to go into that country, it is very important uh, for the current Taliban government to uh, actually make progress in building a more inclusive government and have a better relationship with international community so that the Chinese government can uh, actually um, have a better uh, uh, sort of support from the neighboring countries and, and also uh, from the global community um, and uh, also have more guarantees for their investment in that country. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to emphasize that um, China has made it clear that it has no, uh, like the professor pointed out, vested interest in that country and do not need to and does not will have the will to intervene into domestic affairs in Afghanistan. So purely from a uh, China's internal perspective to maintain stability in Afghanistan is top priority right now. For Afghanistan to go through this winter, we're still calculating exactly how much uh, resource the Afghan government right now needs and to what extent uh, China and other countries can contribute. Right now, a better way to do that through multilateral platform is to attract and is to restore number one, uh, US, EU, and other Western countries' uh, financial support to that country. And number two, to have to involve Gulf countries, uh, those countries that uh, has uh, uh, enough resource and money uh, to come in and support uh, Afghanistan. And number three, to rally all the neighboring countries for their own interest to pour more resource into the country. I think uh, without collective action, with all those parties involved, it's, it is impossible uh, at this point to support close to 40 million people to go through this hard winter. Uh, I'll stop here and I'm looking forward to more discussion on Chinese positions in uh, 
Afghanistan's affairs. Thank you very much. Thank you.